So I come off stage and I'm fuming because I've died on and the dormers there and he ate and he's got a big smile on his face. And the line is, I say, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> and he says, I don't fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> content enjoyers if you, if you like our content the, uh, for free like scum <laughs> and you think we're going to see more content from us but maybe even different styles of content head over to patreon.com forward slash What's happening, Pod? Bobby, what is on the Patreon? We've got loads on the Patreon. We've got Patreon exclusive episodes that obviously people on the Patreon will only be able to see. We've got early access, so instead of seeing it on a Thursday, you'll see it on a Tuesday. We've got specials on there, and obviously you being a Patreon member, you can guide us on which way uh, we should do our specials, what we should film, what we should do. Uh, and, ob- uh, and even if you don't want to watch the the anything on the Patreon anyway, if you just like us in general and you want to support us, like look at look at the people at Patreon have done for us already. Yeah. We've moved to we moved studios, like money. Time. We, we always like, like money, money and more so when it's four pounds a month. Patreon.com forward slash what's happening, Paul. See you over there. Bye. Oh, <laughs> welcome back. Hang on. Is this definitely working? Definitely. 100%. 100%. Definitely. 100%. 100%. Episode 77 of the What's Happening podcast. Thank you all for joining us once again. After last time's audio disaster, <laughs> we've got Pete back in the studio. Yay. Pete Price has come back to, to grace us with his presence once more. Pete, how have you been since, since we last spoke? I'm very flattered. You asked me uh, back. And I've got to tell you now. I've got to tell you now. Go on. Um, we all make mistakes like the mics weren't working. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you my mistake now. Go on. So many years ago when you were children, uh, you didn't get interviews with stars like Coronation Street. They were untouchable. Yeah. And I worked a very long time to get an interview. And I won't mention his name, but I had a producer uh, who came to Manchester with me. I cannot tell you as a lifelong fan how excited yeah, I was I can at interviewing somebody on Coronation Street. I cannot tell you. And uh, we got there, and they used to have a piece of equipment called a ewer, and it was about that big. It was a tape recorder. I worked on batteries, and then you had the headphones and whatever, whatever. We got there, and this producer had not brought the batteries. <laughs> so I've got the interview. <laughs> There's no batteries. We can't ask. I cannot... Lose face in yeah. Granada television. Yeah. And so I did the interview with my hand on the machine, not working, and pretending it was real. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was the most horrendous thing that's ever happened to me. And when I drove him home, I never spoke to him for six months. When I not drove surprised. home, he was in the passenger <laughs> side. The and I, I really wanted to crash my car and kill him. I <laughs> really instant. wanted to kill him. Me as well, because I was so angry. Yeah. Well, what does the coronation so star angry. stay when the interview never come out? <laughs> oh, yeah. Still, oh, no, they're too big. They don't know. They're not asked. They're not asked. Oh, they're just You must have been willy nilly. You must have been gutted, though. You, you, you know, well, when I left here and the mics weren't working, it's the Got one flashbacks. story that comes back to me. <laughs> yeah. You had all the time. Crying in the shower, just letting the water hit <laughs> yeah. him on his face. But, yeah, but being a fan and sitting there <laughs> yeah. with you, yeah. and how with you your hand over the tape recorder, <laughs> how lying. Think, how do you think we felt? Because fucking we've know, been yeah, after yeah, you yeah. for a while. And you, you knew about you're it. You're a local urban <laughs> legend and you were fully aware of the situation. <laughs> like, And I, I felt it was me because I, I go around and I turn everything on. And I sat at home and like, honest to God, right, I had the same feeling I had like when my nan died. I was just <laughs> sat there. I was just sat there and I was like, that's how much you mean to him. I used yeah. to be a gay icon, now I'm a grand. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how it goes, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, evidently. I'll just stop you there. You are the mics working? Yeah. Still yeah. 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 By the yeah. way, he's quite cute. Yeah. That's been a little brother. He's underage. No. He is? How old are you, have lad? Oh, no, he's 20, he's 20, he's 20, he's 20. Is he trying to set me up? <laughs> <laughs> I seen that the other day, you know, the, all these YouTubers are go around getting videos and all that. And he's uh, he's in the street like this. I'll YouTuber. get you for that last like, <laughs> year. <laughs> He'll get you up the shit of your dick. That's how old you are now, Jack. I don't think this... as a grandmother I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I seen this YouTuber, right, and he's like videoing people in the street. And like this girl comes up to him and he goes, hey, mama, you're looking good. And she goes, ah, oh, can you go some old And she goes, 16. And he just goes, nice to meet you. And just, gets <laughs> off, just gets off. Like, like, do you know horrible. what? It's interesting you mention that. Seriously, 
seriously, you don't know people's ages anymore. No, puberty no. Yeah. has reached. You've got kids, yeah. so puberty. You got pubes. That's why you're so. Puberty is reaching another level. Yeah, now. It's mad, crazy, and it's it? scary because yeah. you don't know who you're talking yeah. to. I don't know if it's just me, but like it, it differs on different continents as well. So like Americans always seem to look much older as well. Like yeah. I remember years ago. I don't know if you ever watched. There was a reality TV show uh, for Hulk Hogan. Don't ever watch it. Like, it was no. Hulk Hogan with his family. And like his daughter on it was like a grown woman. Like she was fully developed yeah. and everything. But then she was like 14 yeah. years of age. And I was like, what the fuck? Well, like, my daughter's yeah, 13 and can just about wipe her ass. Like, and she's a full grown <laughs> woman on the telly at 14. Like, what's going I, on? I, I've just watched the Tyson Fury the documentary. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's something about his wife. I was really in, his wife is spectacular. <clears throat> Paris, Paris yeah. is spectacular. But the point I wanted to make was... I can't believe Tyson Fury's 34 years old. Oh, in it. He's finished, he isn't he? I thought he's had the paper so on in the Helmut older. province. He's yeah. Yeah. He was, but that's <clears throat> pointing out the age. Even again. his daughter, though, his daughter's only 12. Well, yeah, age, she was 12, she, 18. And, uh, w- w- what was Paris said? I want her to realise values. She had a diamond on. She <laughs> had a Rolex. There's <laughs> yeah, value on your wrist, love. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what, though, right? Age is mad. Like, Luke, growing up, right? Terry and Irene, who lived across from us, this, you've seen them as an old couple, right? Um, she had fucking purple rinse or whatever you call it, perm. He had a fucking flat cap and like fucking tweed, dog tooth cacks and all that. Right? He, he was an old fella on a walking stick. She was blind. You'd seen them as old. And I found out, I think it was when Irene died, there's a lad around the corner, George, mum and dad, just seemed like fucking normal, like fucking mid 40 year old parents. They were both within like two years of each other. And oh, I was like, how the fuck are yous only two years apart in age, these two separate couples? Because yous are fossils and on your ass, and these look fucking like primes, you know what I mean? And I just couldn't believe it. Age is so mad, it's mad. I, I, Do me speaking a favor of the... before you interrupt Not me, a problem. before I go, or sorry, after I go, will you give me a ring and say what he says about me when I've gone? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 when you told us your age last time, we were shocked, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you're an older man, you've got grey hair, that's fine, we know you're an older man. Cubes. Been, yeah, great, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I was 20. Is right. <laughs> Why but, I don't know. No. But I'm all done. Tell us or? again. Yeah. Just oh, I bleach me. <laughs> no, no. My mates, my mates, Ma used to work in a nursing home, right? And uh, one of one of one of the old women was like, "I've dyed my hair purple, you know, love." And she was like, "Have you? You haven't." I'm looking at it. It's fucking grey. She went, "No, I've dyed the purple." She's like, "Oh, sad." And they just dropped the keg. That purple pubes. <laughs> oh no. Nasty, doesn't it? Should yeah. we call it a day? Hello. Yeah. Hello. We're going down a very strange road. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, t- of it's the, it's your brother's fault. Oh, that is you. He's coming here, yeah, yeah. bringing all sexual tension with him. But <laughs> 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 Are you feeling all right now? Where did the any? sexual tension come from? I don't know. You said this. You said yeah. that. You said so he was. I liked his dimple. Was sexual about <laughs> <laughs> dimple. This is not. I'm just coming over tonight <laughs> thinking we're gonna have a nice, <laughs> yeah. nice yeah. 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 three yeah. semi-attractive guys. <laughs> you know, on grind don't say, again. Don't say semi around him. He's had one the whole time. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said semi. <laughs> See, I can't win tonight. But yeah, that, uh, that, that Tyson Fury documentary, like I've not watched it. Yeah, like it's, it's good. worth it's, watching. Is it? it is taking, good. It's, it's really good. Like, obviously, taking not away from Tyson Fury as, as like an athlete and that, but like I don't know, I found it quite repetitive personally because it felt like to me it was. Like, there'd be, like, a five-minute clip of Tyson Fury fuming about something that he'd then subsequently take out on his wife and kids. And then it'd cut to his dad going, well, you know, the thing with Tyson is he's uh, he suffers with ADD and he's, 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 he's been through the wars. He's the best fighting man I've ever seen. Anyway, champion of the world, lineal champion. And then it'd cut to his wife saying the same thing. And then it'd cut to another clip of him being a dickhead to his wife. And I was like, well, like yeah. what's this? She does take some flack, I reckon. Is, you couldn't thing, live you got to remember, though, yeah. from the travelling community, it's yeah. completely yeah. different. No, yeah, he's, totally. he's got You couldn't, a, couldn't live with him. You no, couldn't I live could, there. I but I loved that. Yeah, I thought it was boss. thought she held the show together. Yeah, she is really good. I couldn't live with them. I, yet, I, held, no. I held the Liv- Lizard of Liverpool well together. Oh, I had it. They had the premiere the other night. Oh, oh yeah, they they How long did they go? It was fabulous. It was was two it? sold out shows. Perfect. And it, these lads have done it. They've been working on it for three years. They've just had a university. So the past day, three years. Like. And <laughs> it's just, I was, it was tongue in cheek. But also Charlie, the main character who sorted it out and got the Hulk Hogan picture. He said he needed to bring me down. I was in that tower and I had an awful lot of evilness that had to be brought out of me. It was very, 
<laughs> and I hadn't watched it. That's so I'm idea. sitting there watching it for the first time. Oh, yeah, you yeah, said yeah, the first yeah. time you were viewing and it. And it was tremendous. Beautifully put together. Boss. Very nice. clever. That's cool. And Hulk Hogan still hasn't a clue where I am. <laughs> <laughs> would, you say, would, you, sorry, would you say in character? So was it not like a documentary? Was it sort of a... It was sort of a documentary stroke pissed like, like a bit of a sketch okay. documentary. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And he used cartoons in it. Oh, so okay. he used cartoons of some of the people when they were listening to my radio show because they had clips of that in. Yeah. And we had David Icke on. And I actually got David Icke to say on my radio show, categorically, Pete Price is not, not a lizard. <laughs> now, if David Icke says that, it must it's be got true. to yeah, be yeah, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then, according to them on the documentary... No, that's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> <laughs> so can't can't is it win. going out anywhere? No, what they're doing is they're using, because they're filmmakers, yeah. they're going to use it in festivals, they're going into the local okay. festival, and then eventually we'll put it out. That's oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, Keep it away true. from everyone yeah. going on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, it's, they've done it, and the reason I helped them was when they said the word festival, they said, we want this for festivals for our career. So when they said that, I'd say I'd do it, because I had them with me for three years yeah. on yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool a long time it takes her on a journey then doesn't yeah. it yeah. that's the calm that's nice, that. festival. Nice it, 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 it's good but, that they've done it justice as well though I think that's it because good, especially yeah. having spent so many years on it it yeah. would have been a shame if you four people happy with came it. dressed as lizards uh, <laughs> that, that is, is incredible, incredible. You, you couldn't know. make it up <laughs> that was the, the family coming down yeah. you know, and Jacob who did it is very shy and I said you're going to say a few words and he went oh alright thanks and sat down that's a few that was one but yes, o- o- overall, you're happy with it? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, was certainly it nothing. It's very flattering to yeah. have a documentary done about you. Of course you, it is. So course it how is. long was it on for? 40 minutes. Oh, really, was it? Yeah, yeah. 40 minutes. Lovely. Well, I remember a, a couple of months ago, there was um, a lad messaged me on Instagram and he was doing uh, like a film and media degree in uni. In, yeah. I think it was Sheffield. It might have been Leeds. It was one of the two. I remember when that happened. Yeah. Um, and he, he was like, um, me and the people who, who I'm in my class with, we all watch the podcast. We love it. Um, and we've been asked to like record a documentary about someone of our choice and we'd love it if we could come to Liverpool and then you take us around like the comedy club did it. and I was thinking fucking I was like yeah <laughs> sure. I'm with them for about six hours I like like going all over town taking it like sitting down doing like separate interviews in different places talking about different things and I was like and I said to them I went listen I said if when you're done with it I said if, if you wanted to go out anywhere I would send it to me and I, 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 I can post it you know on uh, we've YouTube. got a reach yeah and, and they were like oh well see the thing is they were like, we only need four minutes worth of footage for our exam piece. So what we're going to do is just take the best four minutes. And I was like, I've been with you for six hours. I was, <laughs> I was like, I met you at eight o'clock this morning. Like, I didn't even have breakfast. But don't you think that's the amazing thing about television and stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. I have, I've been on This Is Your Life six times. Six times as a guest. And you haven't seen me friggin' once. <laughs> I've been on the cutting floor. What? What? This is your life. Was a because I was keep that, forgetting I'm that, mixing that with Parkinson young people. With his big book, was it? it was that's right. Yeah. Eamon Andrews was the original one, yeah. and then it was uh, it was very famous for it. And then Michael Aspel, and they right, basically right. shock you. They walk in the door now, say, "Pete uh, Price, this is your life," and then they take, take you to the seat. studio, <laughs> and then people come in from everywhere. To uh, to talk to you and they it's it relive your life and show program. you what you've done oh, and he has a big program okay. and like hard oh, this is what you've done this time. program and yeah. I was on as a guest never saw me once I was cut out That's That's I was on the floor I was in the movie No Surrender which by the way if you've never seen watch it I promise you you'll get the shock of your life Alan Bleasdale wrote it okay. Boys in the Black Store yeah yeah and of course that's Yosa Hughes Yosa Hughes, yeah. Hughes. Yeah. Hughes. Yeah. and Yosa Hughes was in the film stop it so Bernard Hill <laughs> was the doorman people say you look like me Bernard <laughs> Hill was the doorman and there's a wonderful line now I play in it a gay has been comic who dies on his arse play yourself so then. it's typecasting <laughs> shut up let me do, let me do my own lines <laughs> give him a dead leg please and he no the uh, a what leg dead I, yeah. I, 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 I was seriously playing that it okay. was unbelievable the film is now it, it's a classic is it Be- oh I promise you a slim Mickey Stark wow Sinbad out of, don't see that yeah, very yeah. often the, the magician <laughs> The magician, Elvis Costello. Fuck off. The first ever jo- Joanna, uh, Joanna Worley, her film. Uh, What's it called? Bernard Hill, uh, No Surrender. No Surrender. Unbelievable. Are you ready for this for go a club? On, go on, go on. So the storyline is 
the uh, the manager of the club doesn't like the owner who was played by Ron Dixon out of yeah. Brookside. And you've got uh, a 7 um, out of 10 on IMBD as well. What? 7 out of 10 on IMBD. Um, so he put... Oh, oh and on the McCanser, you, you will not believe the faces in it. You yeah. will not believe the faces. The story is the manager who's getting beaten up sets up something to happen on New Year's Eve. Okay. And he invites a load of Catholics in fancy okay. dress... A load of Protestants who don't know the Catholics are coming. Right. <laughs> and to put them in the middle, some people with learning difficulties. So you have the middle sect <laughs> with the learning difficulties, mm-hmm. the Catholics, Protestants. He's got a crap comic, me. He's got a magician that kills the rabbit, Elvis <laughs> Costello, and a punk band for them. And something else is happening behind. It is a legendary story, and it's sensational. That's boss. Well worth watching. It must, it must, it must have been Price difficult on set, though, figuring Price. out which well, ones were the lane of difficulty and which ones were the Catholics. That well, must have been it. Because they're all good at <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I really can't believe he said that. He said that, not me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I distanced totally myself from that remark <laughs> to all Catholics. He's getting off now. Oh, my Father Tom will go mental. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry about that, Father Tom. By the way, changing the subject before we go back to the film. Father Tom is the greatest Catholic priest in this city. And he came on my show and I said, Father Tom, and I'm not a Catholic. I said, I've lost my religion. He went, you'll find it. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a sad, nothing at all. That's, that's what he, you want? I yeah. could have been the best. But anyway, so back to the film. So I <coughs> am in this film mm-hmm. and I am filming for hours. And when I'm on stage, I die on my arse. Yeah. But they set it up for me to... So I yeah, genuinely yeah, die. Yeah. I genuinely die. And it's horrendous. But it's brilliantly filmed. Brilliantly filmed. Then I got... And it's all that. And then it's the premiere day. And it was a British premiere. That's and it was sick. at the Odeon in boss, London Road. Boss. I got a limo. I got a what's name. <laughs> Comes out with I'm a pimp coat it. on and that. Mink. I'm in it there. If you blink, you miss me twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, has, he hasn't even got a picture on IMB. He's got a blank out. fucking profile. I, I, I oh, remember... cut out the film? No, no, I wasn't. Oh. Got, I was in it, oh. but not to the extent, extent of yeah, what you recorded. The point I'm making is four minutes. Yeah, and oh, that okay, happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is your life, not in it. I've been on more <clears throat> cutting room floors. I've got to tell you the <laughs> classic room line, floors. the classic line of the film, which made the New York Times because it was that big. The film, wow. Shit. yeah. So I come off stage. And I'm fuming because I've died on And the doorman's there and he ate, and he's got a big smile on his face. And the line is, I say, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> and he says, I don't fucking read. <laughs> <laughs> and that was quoted in the New York Times. No, no, I, I remember That's years ago, I used, I, like do, I used to do loads of extra work um, on Holly Oaks. And then there was, like, so you'd get paid more if you were like a featured extra with like one or oh, two, oh, you said a couple of lines, speaking yeah. lines, and there was there was one time like and the only like so uh, you the, the way it go, all of the extras would get brought together, and they'd need like three featured extras yeah, yeah. who were maybe yeah. gonna say a line, and all the extras would, be, would, be, would always be stood there, and then you know you're trying to like make yourself like taller and that when they when they're picking just so yeah. they and the, the one time I got picked, and it was some like. It was like some like a Christmas or a, like 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 a party for something, and I had to go over to the DJ and be like, "Oh, have you got whatever song it was?" Movie five. And I, yeah, 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 have you got any garage? <laughs> and I was made up. I was like, "Yes, I'm fucking telling me mum and dad and that." I was like, "Listen, because you didn't really watch Holly Oaks anyway." I'll pay the mortgage. I've got <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was, I've, "I've got." I wasn't even bothered. That, I wasn't Call even bothered mate. about the extra fifty quid. I was just made up that I was going to be speaking on telly. And then, so when they were advertising like like oh the Christmas party episode. I, I was we were like all gathered round to watch it. Yeah, party and everything. Yeah, all gathered round to watch it, lads. I'm fun. It was like it, I'm like it's after this bit. Yeah. It's after this bit. Wait, I was wait. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm going right. Here it comes. Here it comes. This is the moment. I'm shutting the blinds and I'm shutting the curtains because there's no glare on the screen and I just skipped and I was going. <laughs> I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Told me that and everything. <laughs> Uh, we'll get, get to do uh, that and ride it. We'll ride it. You've missed it. You've blinked. Get on this. I done a film, right? And it, it's on Netflix now. It's called The Violators. Oh, right, have you? And it, yeah, you know, don't, not Sorry. a big deal or not. Yeah, it's one of them. But so wait, I haven't finished yet. Oh, it had, um, <laughs> St- you know, Stephen Lord. Yeah, I yeah. think it was. Yeah, yeah. It, was he in Shameless? It wasn't. Yes, he was. It, yeah. So Stephen Lord was in it. Um, it was a story about like poverty, basically, and it was like two girls who were like mates, and one was well off and one weren't, and whatever. But it was like it, it was based in Manchester, but we were filming it in Birkenhead. Right. And I was a 
extra slash featured extra was like part of the gang. So like I, I, the, I had an IMDb page and everything made for it. And even though you barely see me in it. Yeah. So anyway, it was stupid shit. Like when they'd be speaking, me and the lads would be in the background and we would all be rolling on a joint. Yeah, uh, yeah, shit. Yeah, so you'd yeah. see me in the background and that night when we were walking past this girl. And on the last day of filming, they were like, oh, we need to give you the line. So I'm like, yeah, go ahead, son. Extra under quid or something. I was like, yeah, go on, boss. And the girl was at to walk past me. And I, I had to say, like in like a... Not a scouse accent, just like a, a yeah. like more of a thing. Yeah, so I was just she walked past and I had to go, You fucking slag and I had to spit in her face. But the way they had the camera, so I went, they felt you know the way yeah. every shot was oh, like you film with me doing that. So I was going, You fucking slag and then it was the camera behind me and I'm going Know what I mean? And she's going, ah. I'm proper made up with it. Watched the whole film twice because I thought I watched it once and I thought missed it. I must have missed it. So then I watched it again and it they cut it out. Uh, <laughs> you only seen the back of me head the whole film. But you see, people who are watching this now have no idea of this. I know, yeah, they we don't go watching no the back. Still get paid, but no idea. Now here's something I've never told anyone. God, For years and years and years. This is Mike working because he's just. I've just knocked the wire out. out. If so I Mike speak, working, can you hear me? Just pull the perfect, lead out. Perfect. I was an extra years ago. Really? On what? Years ago. A programme when you weren't born. I've got to stop saying that because you just weren't born when you were born. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Court, the Crown you... Court. Okay. And it was an afternoon show on Granada. Okay. And what it was, was it was a great idea. You had a court case and then they had uh, extras as the, um, uh, sorry, they, they had the public in as um, the, the, the jury. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they'd watch the, the thing un, yeah. un, um, un, unravel, yeah. and then they would make the decision, yeah. guilty or not guilty. And I was an extra at the back of the jury. See? Whatever happened then? Somebody bins. next door's moved in. Or <laughs> someone oh, just next door. Yeah. Very nice. So the bins have just been empty. <laughs> yeah. The microphone's not working last time. <laughs> so I'm so so the the, 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 the uh, I've never done it before. So I'm sitting in the back with the jury, see? And he went, Cut! What are you doing? What are you doing? So who? You. You're smiling. <laughs> And I went, well, I want to make sure my mum sees me. <laughs> Seriously. He went, we'll do that again. Don't smile. <laughs> he went, cut! What are you doing now? And I was sitting on a cushion Frown. so they could see me. In case they couldn't see me, the people in front. <laughs> he went, producer, get him off set. Oh. That was the only time I was oh. there. There was, there was Because I, I, like... That's how I ended up. <coughs> I, I met Bobby in the first place. Like when we were kids, we'd done loads of like acting stuff. I, I I got involved in like a little, like a like a, just like a little like a little not like a theatre company, but they were based just outside of town, and they just make loads of little short yeah, films yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. And there was there was there was one time we were doing a film about like like a, like a short film about like like about like scallies and stuff like that. And I was like like you remember me from when I was a kid, right? I'll send you the picture to put on screen now, just for reference of how young I looked. This is me on my last day of school. So I'm 16. I'll show you the picture in a bit. You obviously, there's not an here for you. But, um, <laughs> I'm going to text you now to remind you. So, but, um, but yeah. so <laughs> I had to do this thing where there was these lads playing footy and I've had to walk over to the fence with this other lad and, and start giving them loads of shit. And like, you're fucking knobhead, you little dickhead. But like, I didn't realise till I watched it back how high pitched my voice used to be. So I've thought I'm going over like, you're fucking knobhead, you little dickhead. And I've watched it and I've been like, get on me, yeah. And I'm over like, you little <laughs> just watching it going, oh no. So, what age did your voice break? Um, 22. No, I don't know. I was, I was, honestly, about 17, 18. I was a late bloomer, to be yeah, honest. With you. I didn't have any ears on it in school, lad. It was heavy. I didn't. I went to an old boys' school and everyone had pure man dicks and like armpit ears and everything. And I'm sat there going, don't look at me when I get changed. Like, like, there, there was a thing in my school. People here. used to do it all the time. Like, like, you know, when lads were like, prove a puberty. puberty. <laughs> yeah, and they'd be trying to show off. So they could, like, a lad would just approach another lad. And be like, have you got pubes? And they'd be like, yeah. They're like, prove it. So then they'd pull off to, they'd just pull the front of the trousers down, just, just to, to show, pubes. just to, yeah, just yeah. the pubes. Kids and then, and then like, but like, I didn't get pubes. <laughs> I was like nearly seventeen, so I'd have to try and like take the high road on them. And they'd be like, prove a pub, and I'd be like, I don't think it's actually very immature that you're even doing that. <laughs> As it's like, just play it up. <laughs> Danny going to the fancy dress shop and getting a fake money and just strapping it to his pubes. <laughs> I, I, I used to talk myself into the into the furthest corner of the changing rooms in pubes, get changed that quick and like scramble into me pee kit and that. It was sad. sad we, we, we used to always say in our school, like we used to go like to the teachers, oh, stop looking at that, don't change your little pedo and all that. <laughs> and then one of our PE teachers actually got done with a pedo. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, he's, he's, 
It's not slander. He's being charged. He's in prison. Oh, it's oh, an actual. Yeah, yeah. We got in trouble with my school because we 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 spoke about a rumor of of a teacher, oh, right. and uh, the school contacted us. I left the oh, school really? like 16, 17 years ago, and they contacted us saying, "Can you please take it out to slander us?" So we did. But this one's fact. He's in prison. Do you oh. know it's interesting? You mentioned school. Let's talk about that for a minute because once again, different generation. Yeah. yeah. I got battered every three times. By teachers. By, uh, dust is thrown at me. Really? Caned regularly. Wow. Jesus. When did Cain and when did Cain and stop? Need. Need and put me down. Oh, that's the, that's the worst oh, thing no, in the world. Yeah. That's a proper dead leg. Yeah. When did Cain and stop? I really don't know. But it's I know you're not good at dates. No, I, I personally, it it happened all the way through my school. Wow. And it was never the hand. Come on, and, you and, little and, fat get bend over. Whack. But that's and scary they really because even though you're older than us, it's still in that. Like it's it's here in this room. You've experienced it because you like. You hear like Cain and the kids getting punished, and you think that's fucking the olden days. But you live. But there's it. no, there's no discipline today. That's the no, only thing. No, but that's so. the thing. Like yeah. kids can get away with fucking murder now in schools, and it's massively disrespectful. We, as we well. had a teacher called Miss Wilkinson. Mm-hmm. This is a great story, and this really did work in our class. She was a very strict woman, but what she did to punish you, she never caned you or anything. You spoke. Mm-hmm. We all stayed in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you spoke. We stayed in another extra half hour. Yeah. So we battered each other. Yeah. Because it was each other <laughs> was giving us. So we whole Divide class and stayed in. Yeah. The yeah, whole yeah, yeah. class stayed in, and we soon stopped doing it. Yeah. It's not my time you're wasting. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not own. my yeah. time you're wasting, yeah. Jerome. But it was unbelievable. And writing <laughs> lines. <laughs> you know, and I'm dyslexic, so my lines were always different. Yeah, yeah. writing circles. <laughs> <laughs> I I just think I think it's mad the way obviously because like. Like the way, like back back when you were in school, like 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 my granddad used to tell me when he was in school, he used to get fucking bored, dusters bounced off his head most yeah, days. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's yeah, yeah. I used to and get. like I just think it's Mister Box. Yeah, because he, he, he used to he used to say like a lot of the teachers in it, like the, like the male teachers in his school, were fellas who had like who had fought in in the Second World War and stuff like that. So like like you get them, you get them fellas yeah, who, yeah. Who, who were probably riddled with PTSD and go and punish that child however you see fit. <laughs> it was like. Where was your school? Where did you go to school? Uh, Holy Prayer School. I wasn't particularly bright at school. So was that um, just a normal, just a name? Um, it was a secondary modern school. Oh, just a secondary school. Um, I, I, I remember that um, cornflakes had a lot to answer for once. You used to get free gifts. <laughs> what a and sentence. Are you, ready, are you ready for this? The cornflakes gave, years and years ago, a crossbow that fired matches. So the whole <laughs> class. Such a cool oh, idea. Oh my god, that pass health and safety now. <laughs> like the fire fit, launch them. 40 in the classroom, and we all had bows, and every one of us got caned. Every <laughs> customer was caned. It's totally you false know, we used, of cornflakes. You know what we used to do in school? You know, ever get like paper and like fold it up and fold it up and fold it up, and, fold it up, and, fold it up, and fold it up, and so it was dead thick, and then turn it into like a little fucking like a paper band. Band. Yeah, and a lazy band, but we used to shove a fucking drawing pin through it, so it had a pin on, and fucking whack oh, people in the back wow. of the neck, and have a little fucking hole and everything. Wow. Was I, 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 what, 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 go on. I, so when I was in school, we used to like, we used to like, like take like the inside of a biro pen out and you get like two balls of paper yeah. and, like, <laughs> and me me and me and one lad I was mates with in particular in school a lad called Jack Nicholson um not the not the one from the Shining um, <laughs> um he went to the other school and <laughs> and we, we 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 were terrible for it like like we were like smack heads with it as soon as we'd see a pen on the floor we were like a weapon and we'd like pick it up <laughs> and we were like we were like ah. and there was there was there was another lad um it was in our year and his name was Scott and. He, we used to just—I don't know why—but because it used to piss him off so much, we go, we we get him. It was, and there was one day in English, I I, I just turned around and went, Scott, and he's went, you better, and it's went, it was, right. and he went, <laughs> and, then, and then my mate Jack was sat behind him, him and just pulled his chair from under him, and he was on the floor underneath the chair, and I was nearly choking to death on a spitball. What about magnifying glass? Holding the hand oh, of burning. Like, I've never yeah. done. I have never done them. You know, Travis the only thing I've probably not, not done. I used to they, burn ants in the garden. Did they, yeah. I used to go fishing all the time with my stepdad, yeah, yeah. right? And like when I was a kid, obviously. I love fishing, always go, but as a kid, your, your attention span's not the greatest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking lose interest. And I'd have my magnifying glass, and we'd be in Nugent Park fishing, and I'd just be sat on the hill, just burning ants with this magnifying glass. Like, oh, <laughs> so I, 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 I was, yeah, I was a, cruel, I was a psychotic. Pupils, yeah, not ants. Pupils. <laughs> I, 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 I was a psychotic little kid. I mean, I'd go in the back garden in the summer when all the flying ants were out and take, take the, the wings, wings off, off them and them. put them in the dog's water bowl. Anyone having the tea? <laughs> <laughs> Pause this because it yeah. could get weird. It's a bit fucked up, that, isn't it? That is weird. What's the dog done to you? 
Maar het is al die answers. Nee, nee, dat is De ding is, I reckon there's some sort of statistic out there where kids like yourself who've done stuff like that turn out to be like serial killers. No, 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 it's very much so a statistic. It's like... Yeah, it's it's almost factual. Yeah, yeah, doing weird shit like that and then they be a serial killer. Do you know what's just jumped into my head now? Oh, my word. So the (laughs) Hoylake Parade School, if anyone's watching this, it went. I wonder if you remember this or you were there when this happened. The whole school were put out in the playground, yeah. boys and girls, the whole school, to find out who <laughs> had hung a tampox, tampax on the railing <laughs> in the playground. A bloody one. It no, wasn't, wasn't you, it was oh. just a tampax, but it was the fact it was a tampax. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. And we stood there for about two hours. In the rain. In the rain. That tampon really, was a yeah. massive laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and all, yeah. Remember that we come up. Yes, you could have slept on it. Yeah, yeah we come up. We, yeah, we come up here the other the other week, didn't we? And there was a there was a a, 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 a used sandy pad, yeah, right outside the door. Right where so, right, right where you're sat. We give we give Gary twenty quid and he lift it. He didn't. He didn't. No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. You actually do on this podcast say some horrible things. You do. He was a lad in our school. He's got something to say. He's got something in the lad in our school. He got a, so he got a nosebleed and he put a tampon in his nose. <laughs> that That's probably a fucking good idea. Well, to finish the tampons, my mum had a corner shop. <laughs> no, my mum had a corner shop and she battered me. She battered me. And she said, you think that's funny? And I seriously was being serious. We'd had a flood and I put half, pr- half price... <laughs> Sad, soggy tampak <coughs> for sale in the window. <laughs> and we're not supposed to, because when I served in the shops, you know, because women would come in and they'd go, um, um, is your mother in? Mom, she wants a tampak! Because <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want kids. Too proud, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was the world yeah, we lived yeah. in. Yeah. Where are we it's going with this one conversation? One. I know, I know. Sorry about this. <laughs> Peter don't need to apologise. This is why they watch this. Yeah, that exactly. Because we. Well, for my, me talking for about my, for my do- <laughs> yeah, 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 But yeah. I can't wait because my daughter's of age now, right? Where no, don't start. Where she's going to be menstruating, Whoa. and I can't wait to start embarrassing her in the shop, like just buying like the ones that are about four foot long and everything. Do you need these for every flow, baby? And all that. And just watching her crumble. Like, me, me bed got um, <coughs> the adult nappies for the last child bear fright because. Uh, is a Stacey Solomon fucking... Do you get a leaky bucket, do you? <laughs> leaky bucket, yeah, you do, because <laughs> you've just pushed a human out of your vagina. Oh, is this after? I thought you yeah. meant before. No, afterwards. Oh, okay. So, uh, in the aftermath, you'll still have, like, retained placenta and stuff that leaks out, yeah. so it can be quite messy. So, Stacey Solomon, who is married to... Joshua. Joshua, yeah. She's quite big on social media, so she does all, like, mother's tips and all that, and she was like, the last pregnancy... I wore these adult nappies. She was like, best of shit than I ever made. So like loads of girls are jumping on at me. Bird bought them. And she said, they were boss. We've still got a pack of ours. And I've been dying to put them on and just try and have a piss and a shit on the couch. <laughs> well, do you know what? If you're now friendly with your Uncle Peter, I'm at the age. I'll buy them off you. <laughs> your Uncle Peter. I'll, I'll buy them off you. <laughs> yes. Have it is, love um, it. So I think we did, well the last time we were, you were on here anyway before we had the microphones on you were telling us that you would you you done something with the um, with the armed forces. I just told you not to mention that. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I tell you what one of the one of, my, one of the one of the one of the greatest stories I I think that's ever happened to me uh, was through the armed forces. I worked as a comic uh, for CS. CSA, Combined Services Entertainment. Okay. And we went all over the world. We mm. went to Falklands just after the war, uh, Ascension Island, uh, Belize in Central America, which I'll tell you about, uh, Northern Ireland. It was it was amazing. It was unbelievable. It was the most incredible journey. Yeah. But one of the stories that will never, ever... Well, there's two main stories which I'll tell you. Falklands in a minute. I'll do this one first. So we go to Belize mm. in Central America. Yep. Belize is the arsehole of the world. Yeah. I promise you, the it's arsehole, a little rusty sheriff's badge line in it. The arsehole of the world. <laughs> Netherlands, three miles up it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean that, Netherlands. <laughs> My mum's from Netherlands, thanks, <laughs> Pete. That's why I said that. Is yeah. 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 Wrong, yeah. Is so, she, yeah? Your mum from Netherlands. If she loves you, she'll be heartbroken. And as that from Belize, she can go. Does your mum watch this? No, she wouldn't do. Oh. <laughs> right. So we get over there. We go out with two dancing girls, a trio, uh, drums, bass, and nice. organ. Uh, uh, me as a comic and compere, and also, and I can't remember his name, a ventriloquist 
where the chimpanzee that talks, which is nothing, but over there, they're all superstitious and into voodoo and all that. Oh. They wanted to kill this doll. <laughs> Seriously. They, did, they couldn't stand this talking doll. Just spears coming and the, the more he got pissed, the more the doll talked. <laughs> and it was really, really scary. Now, I'll tell you how bad Belize is. Belize City, I believe it's nice now, this yeah. was a few years ago, is where they made the movie Dogs of War. Which was oh, okay. a phenomenal movie. Yeah, yes. and the know. hotel they made in is where we stayed. Anyway, wow. this particular day, we had to go into the jungle, Salamanca. And I mean the jungle. This is where if you and I slept on the floor together and you get up to go for a wee, you've got to tie yourself to me because just walking so there, you'd, it's unbelievable. Wow. It's, it's honestly the scariest place ever. Wow. And I'm, by the way, scared of... And insects, whatever. Uh, whatever, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna, Why'd you going to... Why would you go to the jungle This then? story, you're not going to believe. Oh, right. Oh, so, no. the Gurkhas pick it up. And what a lovely, I, I take them off my gentle, all the time. beautiful people. I love the Gurkhas. I thought they were incredible. And they have a dagger in their ankle. The and if they take the dagger, yeah. dagger out, they've got a cup blood. They've, so if you what? want to see the the dagger, they've got to draw it's, blood. It's, it's the show series, they are because like really? you know they're because only I know the most intense force. They're only, the meant, world, they're only meant to draw yeah. that night if they intend to use it. Somebody so, attacked ah, one yeah. of the Gurkhas uh, the night before, or sorry, a, a couple of weeks what before. What stupid dickhead decides to attack a Gurkha? Well, I don't whoever, know. Whoever, I'm not, I whoever don't know did what it, it was just a head left in the bush. Wait, top. someone? Uh, what's a really? Yeah, yeah. What's so a Gurkha? Sorry, are they the a Gurkha is? Are they the official armed force? Are they? The the the, the Gurkhas are from um, where is where is it they live? It, um, Nepal. Tibet. Tibet. Yeah, Nepal. Yeah, that, 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 that sort of area. And they uh, were part of of our our colon, colony yeah. when we were years. And they loved the English. And mm. they came. They were goat herders. They would come. They were vicious. Yeah. Uh, warriors. Warriors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Warriors. And then the. They'd go back. A lot of them would go back to go So they turning. joined the British Armed Forces and the, the have like little regiments or whatever of the game. Yeah, they were like, they were like a special force. Oh, okay. Like, because they, they are hardcore they're, warriors. They're, they're, they're frightening yeah. Like, they fight, they fight to the kill. Most, the As most, you just said, like, yeah. you were talking, I don't know if you missed yeah. it. I said, dude, what the head did attack the, attack the girl? And he said, I don't know. He said, when we woke up, there was just a head there. Oh, okay. The yeah, they, like, so, they're the you know, they really are. Uh, but I, and diverting for a second, I do work in Singapore, that's another story. But the money we raise uh, in Singapore, which is a charity we do for two weeks, is to help the Gurkhas, riding for the disabled and the Gurkhas family. Joanna Lumley backs the Gurkhas and hates the way they've been treated over the years mm. because they've been loyal to us. Yeah. Anyway, they take us in to Salamanca. The Scots Guards are there, so we're going to entertain the Scots Guards and the Gurkhas, who don't understand, but they'll see and yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've cleared a space in the jungle so it's a big like a campsite and but getting to it is horrendous so they've then put two tanks with the lights so we've got the two tanks we've got the stage here so i'm on the stage all the soldiers are there the gurkhas are over there and we're set for the night so we've got the dancing girls i do the compare blah, blah blah whatever whatever <clears throat> and it's we do it all over the world brilliant picture this as i'm working and i had long hair at the time like your length which is important to the Did story. Yeah. Yeah. Send us a picture and we'll put it on the screen. Uh, oh, I've got the most incredible... I, I look like Kevin Keegan. Oh, <laughs> oh, I said, yeah, send us all. Yeah. 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 So it's long hair. So picture the long hair. Yeah. Right. As I'm working and doing gags, something flies at me and sticks in my hair. And it's a bat. Oh, so no. there is a bat oh, like on animal. my like head. Like a baseball bat. <laughs> no, not a baseball bat. Sorry. A bat in the jungle. Or a baseball cap. <laughs> so this bat is stuck. Oh. The guy who's sitting next to me on the organ has stopped playing. <laughs> he stopped playing because there's a tarantula on the Leslie, which is the speaker of the organ. Fuck that. The bat is after the tarantula. <laughs> so there's a tarantula. There's the bat stuck in my hair. There's the tarantula. I am screaming like a banshee. <laughs> the 
<laughs> soldiers think it's the funniest thing they've <laughs> ever <laughs> seen. Laugh, yeah, don't mean they it. just think it's a step. He's stuck on the organ like that. <laughs> I'm like this, screaming the plate. They eventually, Sergeant Major goes, guy, I need it for my and knocks it out there. <laughs> and I just, I went to pieces, absolute pieces. We're going to have to have a break. They think it's part of the show. They then take me to a missing hut, which is the corrugated iron missing hut. And all you can hear is... And I'm going, what's that? And he went, rats. Now, the rats were like baby donkeys. Oh, for oh, I oh, mean cats. Oh, I mean they, And there's thousands of them. Oh. So we've got all the rats. I am in a ter- terrible state. The Gurkhas are trying to calm me down. The Scots guards think it's the funniest thing you've ever seen <laughs> in their life. The girls won't go on stage. We put a show together. I don't know how. <laughs> then the Gurkhas said, we like you very much. We want you to join us for breakfast. Breakfast there was four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Not my time of day at the best of times. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, Especially yeah, no. in a jungle. Still I haven't that. slept <laughs> because there's all sorts of things walking around the tent yeah. outside and I'm sleeping in the Jeep eventually because I feel safer. <laughs> we get there at four o'clock in the morning and they're all saying, very funny last night, very funny. You, I love the way you do the show. Funny, funny, funny. And they serve curry. Four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I take a mouthful of curry because I don't want to eat it. But you've got you to can't be because rude. it's you've got disrespectful. Be respectful. Yeah. I have never in my life had curry so hot. The spoon melted into me face. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't swallow. I couldn't breathe. The steam coming out my nose. My eyes are watering and they're laughing. <laughs> and there is a uh, scorpion on the table to which they machete in half. <laughs> So I've got a mouthful of of, of, of curry. Of I've got half half a, a scorpion looking at me, and I want to throw up, but I can't throw up because it's welded to me face. With <laughs> I've never had he I, I'm coming out in lumps. I've never had curry like in my life. Never. So I said, and they calmed me down and everything. And they said, "What's going on? It was funny." I said, "You better go back." You better go back and have some uh, R&R. So we went back to uh, the the town, which is the arsehole of the world. <laughs> I said, thank God for that, a hotel room. I am shaving, and I can see it right now. The plug hole lifted. No. And out come a flying beetle, for, for, which oh, flew, no, holding the bloody plug <laughs> in its mouth with this. Ah. And I'm thinking, I've got to, I've, I've got to go back to England. I cannot ah. stand any of this. He said, right, we're taking you to one of the islands for some real R and R. So we went, and I can water ski. And I'm quite good at water skiing. So I'm relaxed, I'm calmed down, and I'm on this water ski. And they're pulling me too fast. I went, pulling me a bit fast, a bit fast, behind you, behind you. And I looked, and there's a shoulder barracuda. They kill you. Ah, oh, barracuda. I now am running on skis past the boat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened. I got the next plane home and went. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they wanted me to go in the jungle. No. Never in a million years. I'm a celebrity. Did I go on that program? Yeah. Oh, oh you, you, you should have went on it, it though. You Never know. in it. No, they'd all vote for me. Fuck I'd be off. demented. Did they ask you to go on it? Yeah, Did yeah. they? Oh, you should have went oh, on it. Oh, you no. should have done. No. What, what, why don't <laughs> those Because of what they just told you. He <laughs> would have been to the most. He would have just, imagine that. I mean, yeah, I just. He would have had three minutes on the show, that's it. <laughs> Honestly, but that story is perfectly uh, true. That's exactly what happened. Uh, what happened to the. the- Another little way from one of the sponsors, Dan, who's the sponsor? I'm glad you asked, Bob, because Gary was over there looking up. <laughs> Awfully confused. I was very confused. Yeah, well, Gary, you'll be glad to know the sponsor. It's on your t shirt. What can hell it is as well? Technicals. Technicals. And if you're sitting there wondering over technicals, what are technicals? What do technicals do? See this t shirt, they do this. Wow. Technicals are a sports and sports and active wear brand that put a heavy focus on keeping their attire stylish, keeping it contemporary. So if you live an active lifestyle but you don't want to dress like a geography teacher, head over to technicalsbrand.com and use code. Happening 20. I'm glad you remembered. Now, of course, you, of course, you can buy the stuff in JD, but please don't do that. Please go onto the website. Help us out. Help you out. Get 20% off. Happening 20. Technicalsbrand.com. Boom. Love you. Falklands. Oh, that was amazing. 
So we, I thought you were going to say the curry was back curry, then, you know, that's what I was waiting I for. Thought, I oh, thought you were going to say there was bats in the curry. Yeah, oh, back curry. Well, yeah. I don't know what was in the curry. <laughs> yeah, it probably was, yeah. I, I, I do believe that it. That's the answer that fell in. Yeah, I was going to say that kid's body, yeah. <laughs> I do believe if it's alive, they eat it. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know. The Falklands was amazing. This made every national newspaper in the end, but it was all hushed up. We went um, in the Falklands. We, we went to Ascension Island, which was amazing. Uh, do any of you play golf? Played right, they've got the best golf course in the world. It's volcanic rock, nobody can guess past the first ball, uh, first hole because if you hit the ball, it just bounces back at you. <laughs> it's a vol- volcanic rock, it's mental. It's the most famous <laughs> golf club in the world. No oh, one's shit. ever got past second hole, it's mental. So, anyway, we're there having a great time. The weather's great, and we had a ball. And they've got a post box on the top of the island where you put a postcard in. It's oh, okay. the most strange place in the world. Then we had to go on a Hercules, uh, which is the big plane that carries... Uh, the all on the, it, the, the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. huge. <coughs> so you just, sit... It opens at the back and they all jump that's out. Right, that that's one, it. Yeah. You sit in a place like we are now. We can't talk. We can't do anything. There's a, a curtain there with a toilet, but you can't do anything. You can't read. You can't see anything. You can't do anything. And we're there for 10 hours. No. Oh. And then we... F- w- so we then uh, <laughs> refuel midair. Uh-huh. So we I actually see that when another plane it. come. Yeah. Oh, have you ever seen it before? Was, I know another plane do, but I would not like to be on a plane when it happens. Well, it, but it was the noise and whatever. It was horrendous. Anyway, oh, fuck that, this yeah. is what happens. Cutting the right story right down, because it's a long story, but cutting it down. We arrive at the Falklands in thick fog, and the Hercules is a ridiculously big plane. We nearly hit the mask, mast of a, 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 of a, a ship, and then we lift up. So we're in dilemma apparently now, which we didn't know any of this yeah. until after. We now are going towards Brazil. We can't land there because, the th- and we can't go back to Ascension Island. We've been in the air for 10 hours. So we're now going to Brazil, but it turns out there's an electrical storm in Brazil and we turn around. What we don't know is while this is going on, there is an international incident in the world Margaret Thatcher was in power. She knew all about it. What are we going to do? We eventually land in Argentina, which we're at war with. Oh. We got off the plane. We had our, uh, not phones, because we didn't have phones. Our cameras taken off us. Our passports taken off us. And we were with a man called Rear Admiral Fitch, Finch, who was going over to take over as as the um, uh, running, the commander. Um he then got us into a hotel. We were under armed guard the whole time. We woke up in Buenos Aires that day. We couldn't photograph anything or do anything because we had Aww. nothing to do. We then got back on the plane. Something had happened, which we didn't know. And then we arrived. So we'd been in the air for 20 hours wow. in this monster of a plane. Wow. And then it hit the papers that there had been an international incident. Shit. So we got there with Rear Admiral Fitch. Then we were based on um, Fort Austin, which was in uh, um, Falklands Way. Which was, um, <laughs> I always remember this, it was a, a supply ship. And we had two lovely girls with us on this show. Um, and she was a bit thick, this one. Hmm. I'm sorry, thick was the only word. <laughs> she had motorbikes. Her dad just bought her a car. She was very pretty, but when she was on a motorbike, she couldn't stop f- smoking a cigarette. And of course, it didn't last because it burnt down with the wind. while she was driving the motorbike. She kept <laughs> burning her nose. Mental. She was mental. <laughs> she was absolutely mental. So... She he bought her a car. Everybody was after her. Every so we're on Fort Austin. She came from Halifax. She went. Hey, she said, "What? What is this ship?" She said, well, "It's a supply ship. A supply ship. What, what do you mean supply? Well, it, you know, we've got uh, drugs on board, as in for medical health, and we've drugs, got Danny's balls, and bullets, <laughs> and guns." And she went. You mean it's a supermarket? He went. Yes, it's like a supermarket. <laughs> All right, Bever name was. Like a supermarket. You don't have any lacquer, do you? Mm. Lacquer. <laughs> I'll get you some lacquer. He, he wanted to... Yeah, he yeah. Wanted, he, he, but by he push off, he wanted to lacquer, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Than that he play. took a helicopter, flew to Falkland Island, which was over there, uh, got a tube of hairspray, brought it back, cost him 5,000, or it cost us 5,000 pounds for the hairspray. 
to go over with the helicopter. He best have got his willy wet for that, you know. No, he he didn't. No, he didn't. And she said, oh, I can't use it. £5,000, I'll keep that. She's probably still got it. (laughs) She's probably still got it. And it was... I would have choke slammed it everywhere. Well, I would have just grabbed it and just battered it. <laughs> <laughs> well, then she wanted to go and see the the uh, penguins. So we flew in by helicopter off. the penguins. It's funny that I call me Dick Penguin. Get on that. Here's one for you. <laughs> and there's 2,000 penguins She would have like a penguin. She would have been black and white with a batter there. That would be delightful. 2,000 penguins on the beach. And uh, it's just great. <laughs> As the helicopter came in, it knocked them all over. <laughs> <laughs> can't get up, so we had to go around. <laughs> <laughs> 2,000 penguins. penguins. <laughs> she wants to see the penguins. But I love things penguins like dog. that are just ama- amazing things that happen. We did one show for 12 people. One show with a proper... Because they needed to be, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. cheered up. And it, it, it was it's incredible. different it was, world than a third yeah. yeah. What was, was it like it in was. Ireland? Ireland, we were, well, I'll tell you a story about Ireland. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So I went to work for the army uh, in Ireland, and we were in the uh, armed vehicles, and yeah. we had bottles thrown at us, because we went in the wartime. We had a bottle yeah. in Ireland, um, was it? Northern Ireland. We went Belfast, Jordan, the Belfast. Belfast. Right, right in the truck. Right, right in it, entertaining once again. <laughs> uh, and that was scary. Having said that, I went back years later, which is a great story <laughs> of sorts, I went to work the Abercorn. The Abercorn was the big, big nightclub in the middle of Belfast. Yeah. And you went through so much security to get there. You wouldn't believe the amount of checks you have to get there. Just for the nightclub or Just in for the nightclub. Wow. No, for everywhere. Yeah, but that yeah, was yeah. in the middle. Yeah. I didn't know that the, the IRA... Or whatever. Well, the IRA offices was upstairs. It eventually got blown up. Now, the hotel I was staying in was the Royal Avenue. That had been blown up a month before. I'd stayed in the Europa. That had been blown up six times. Uh, I mean, he, 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 it really was a scary time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I loved the challenge. Ago, we and they no. said, you know, to go over and entertain, they were made up yeah. that an English person would come over. Yeah. And they were lovely. They were lovely. And we had a great, great audience. It's a suicide mission, that though, isn't it now? Like, well, it's scary, isn't this it, yeah. is a suicide mission finished. Are you ready for this? Put your comic heads on. <laughs> so I worked, did really well, tremendous. Went back to my hotel room. Open my door. I've gone sick now telling you this because this is Claymore. horrendous. Open my door. <laughs> and there's Beth and going, I've got some air spray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> there was a man sitting on my bed with a black coat on and a black hooded hat. And he had his hand in his inside pocket. Oh, fuck and that. he said, I believe you've been talking to the soldiers. To which I collapsed, fainted, Completely open my bowels, completely weed, everything. Uh-huh. Just and woke up with him, slapped me face, going, and the doorman, it was a joke. It was a joke. What's wrong with it? It's a joke. I thought that was funny. I thought that was funny. Peace out, you've shit yourself. <laughs> shit myself. I went to the airport in the pants with the shit. I wanted to get out of Ireland. <laughs> Fucking I champagne have never stains been all over so his and everything. scared in my life. Oh, you would shit yourself. No, you yeah. laugh at me. Can I, you I, imagine? I like to think what a sick bastard he is. I just sit in there. How long was he there for? <laughs> Did he See you coming from upstairs, he'd be there for about six hours going, I'm getting crampy. Yeah. <laughs> he, had, he had a nap and a wank and everything, even that way. You couldn't make that up, could no, you? No, that's the most. That was the most unbelievable thing. I can wow. see it now, I can feel it now, I can, I can smell how s- fearful I was. Yeah. It was absolutely so terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so well, no, he just thought it was a joke. Did you get a he charge a from the old self of the carpet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the agent rang up and said, What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? You're so- stupid. Do you know what? That must have been some relief though from like thinking you're getting assassinated to get him woke up with me. I was only messing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but just, by the way, you've you've, 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 yeah, you've, you've, you've done a poo. <laughs> a poo? No, I emptied everything. My stomach was hanging out. I thought he was going to die. I thought he had a gun in his inside pocket. Yeah. I like to think I, like imagine that. he just pulled out a massive dildo and was like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I like to think I'd be able to keep me cool during a situation like but that. But it's fight or flight. You, you never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Not when you open the door and somebody's a uh, Stranger, uh, especially yeah. during six those foot, times, yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, it's a war, it's, it's a war, war fucking town city. But that's, that's the thing, like, the amount of times, like, as a man, you think you're hard sometimes, you're like, oh, if you know, you face any adversities, you just fucking stand up to it. And all that, the amount of times I've walked into the kitchen, clocked my reflection in the window, and shit myself. Oh, that's <laughs> 
Is that how it's made? Shall you land on a glass of water? I'm, I'm, ve- I'm very, I'm very jumpy. It's very easy to make me jump. Like, like, and and like, I've, I've, I like to think if I'm, if I'm ever put in a situation where I'm faced with like genuine danger, like, like, I, like, I'd be okay. But I, I, I remember when I was a kid, we used to have a parrot. We used to have a big, a big blue and gold macaw, um, that lived uh, in a cage in the house. And he, 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 it was a clever bastard because it, it, it figured out. It used to watch us whenever we'd open the cage to feed them or to get them out the cage and like like play with them and that. He, he, he'd watch how we'd work, like the mechanism on the on, on the yeah. cage door, and knew how to let himself out. Okay. So we put a padlock on it to stop him doing it, and then he figured out, you know, the tray at the bottom where these where, where the shit that is, and you clean it out. He figured out he could slide that open <laughs> and just drop down. <laughs> so when I used to get in from school, I'd just sit, I'd sit at, the, at, at the dining room table, just like drawing pictures or, or doing what I was doing. And then there's been one day, I've heard like, I've heard like, 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 like the, the rattling of the cage. And, 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 and then I just did, but I, I, sorry, at this point, I didn't know he could jump off the bottom. I thought he was padlocked yeah. in. And that was that. And then I just did across the across the living room floor, and where the archway is leading from the front to the back room, I couldn't see into the living room. So I'm like, "What the fuck's that?" <laughs> I was like, "That's not a human." Both of the dogs are there. What's this? <laughs> and I'm there, shaking. Just trying, I'm like, "Just draw your picture. Just draw your picture. Just draw your picture." <laughs> and the fucking parrot heads come around the archway and go, "Hello!" And I, 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 I went, oh, I went under the table. <laughs> I went. I, I went <laughs> just slid under the table. What do the dogs do? Nothing. The, do- the, the dogs, dogs were terrified of it. Oh, tell me. Because they didn't know what to do with it. Because yeah. like it, it, they didn't know what it was. They knew it wasn't a human, but it could talk to them. And, <laughs> and then it'd get out the cage, and it wouldn't fly around. It'd just walk around. Because what we, we used to, so we used to have, we had the big blue and gold macaw, and then we had a, a little African grey parrot. We had to get rid of them because my dad became allergic. I opted for put him in a home, my mum. <laughs> my mum said there was, there was too many logistics. And, and like, the parrots, like, they were, they, it's weird how intelligent they are. Like, you think they just hear you and they copy you, but they sit and they learn they say, yeah, what, they what you're saying and yeah, what it means. Yeah. And, and, like, they, they clocked that if we had go, because we had two girl dogs at the time, if we went, girls, get out, they'd run out for a wee. And then when we call them back in, they'd come back in. So the parrots between them want to be in a cage here and want to be in a cage there. And then one of them would go, girls, out, in my mum's voice. No. So the dogs would run out and be at the kitchen no. door, wanting to go out for a piss. And then the other parrot would go, and they'd run back in and they'd have the dogs going back and forth <laughs> for about an hour at a time. The clever like yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen the parrot that lives in Princess Park? Princess Park down in Toxteth? No. So I don't know if it's a macaw, I don't know the, the breed, the big red ones. Yeah, it's oh, a type of macaw. It's a type of macaw, big red macaw, right? Someone released it in Princess Park or, or escaped or something years ago and it literally lives in the park That's and sick. you just see it flying from tree to tree. It just doesn't leave the park. It's just the mad farm parrots, home, though, mad, they've, they, like, they've got a lifespan of like, like 80, 80 years, to 90 yeah. years. So it's it, like, like it's fucking, that parrot, depending on how, how long it's been there, I'll probably be there for about another fucking 20 odd years anyway. Mad. You know, there's um, par- a couple of parks in London full of parrots. Is there? Is there yeah. any? Yeah, actually, just living in the trees. No way. It's no. Ama- amazing, and lots of them. Wow. Lots of them. Talking about your mum, have you all got your mums? Yeah. 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 Unfortunately. Because um, you start <laughs> talking about your mum, and when you talk about your mum, I always start playing with this bracelet here. Okay. And there's a reason, and you'll love this story. Go on. So, my mum was a mum. My dad had a lot of money, lost everything. Mum's finished up scrubbing steps in the pub to keep me alive. That's another story. Through mum. It's 20, 21. Uh, she had no money, but she saved and saved. And they used to have a dimple bottle, whiskey dimple bottle, and she was putting sixpences away. And there wow. was a hundred pound in, which was a great deal. Mm, of money. Yeah, of course. It was. That was one of my presents. And then this bracelet. Now, ID bracelets were mm-hmm. all the rage. And I didn't want one of these big clumpy ones. I wanted this gentle, a this classy one, looking one, which mm. I thought was classy. So there's my ID bracelet. Yeah. And I wore that every day of my life. And it eventually wore out, and I put it away, and then had it rebuilt when I had a view, Bob. So that's the original one, but oh, wow. rebuilt. But this is the story. So I went, I got upset because I couldn't believe she bought me an ID bracelet. And I went, Oh, that's lovely. And she put on it, uh, Love You, Son. And I looked at the front and I went, Mother, what have you done? What's that? She's an ID bracelet. 
I wanted to meet fucking address. Five <laughs> <laughs> A Bridge Road, West Kirby. Tears on it. Tears on the penicillin. You made a talk show of me. It's an ID bracelet. What happens if we move? Giving me back, I'll change the address. <laughs> My <laughs> mates destroyed <laughs> lost dog me. Line. But isn't that great now? That is. That's that. okay. It's good that you still got it. Road, West Kirby. That's and the phone brilliant. number is that house still standing? Two five five two eight one. Should we phone it and see if anyone's got that number now? <laughs> Uh, like this is, is that, is that house still no standing? It it was the shop, my mum's shop, shop, shop. Uh, which was a corner shop, yeah. uh, with which was a chandler's that sold paraffin and firelighters and soap powders and all that sort of stuff. It's now a house, and it went up for sale, and I nearly bought it back oh. just to say I owned it again. Yeah. But wow. that means so much to me. Oh, just yeah. turn up, like, listen, me, Brazer said, this is my cat. <laughs> I think you're fine, Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, that's brilliant. That, 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 it's that, good that, that you've still got it. Oh, yeah, because I love it so much, life. but she made a show me. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 I mean, when everybody had the aluminium bikes, five gear, she bought me a, a, a rally solid steel. You couldn't lift the bastard thing. It was a bright yellow and blue. Mum bright yellow and I remember growing up when I was a kid, I remember Heelys, Heelys with the rage, the shoes with the wheels and the heels, and you could click them and go, healing everywhere yeah. right? so I was like I want them and I want them and she was like alright son never ever got me them right I wanted them from between the ages of like 5 to like 12 right my 14th birthday I got up for school early because my presents were there come downstairs and I opened this box my ma had bought me a pair of Heelys and I was like you're about three years too late you know girl <laughs> Mom, I've got two kids I was like I was like <laughs> I drink in the park and try finger beds on the weekend. Like, I don't want to be getting off on healing. Can't, you know can't I mean? be healing up to yeah. some woman. Can't be like, like, good to meet you. And I'm off. <laughs> she was like, so what? You don't like them? I was like, no, you misunderstand. I, I, I like the like thought. Mom, I'm not going to go to you. So I was like, I'd have liked them three years ago. Yeah, can, can you just get me something different, please, mum? She was like, really? I was like, please, mum. Like, I don't want to be ungrateful, but I'm not going to use money. them. Yeah. She was like, don't worry, I'll change the present while you're in school. And I was like, all right, mum, sounds. So I went to school. Rollerblades. And I was like, what's she going to get me? She got me this little keyboard that played, like, tunes, this little purple keyboard. And I was like, you took the piss out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 you like, made it feel Take that back and get the shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, first, my first bike, because we had no money, is something you lot won't know about. God bless us. An Army and Navy bike. It was a bike that folded up and they in the war dropped in uh, in a helicopter um, in parachutes mm. with the bike strapped to the back Fuck oh. off. and then they would undo it off? Put them up and do it all up and, and, and so I got one and it's green um, camouflage green with nuts about that big <laughs> screwing it together I mean my mates took that piss out of me <laughs> but she had no money yeah. Well, yeah at least i had a bike yeah and one of my friends going down grange hill which is a very steep hill in west kirby I'll show that. going down grange hill it was great one of my mates kindly undid <laughs> slightly the nuts <laughs> and the front of the bike went left and the right of the bike went right one, and yeah. I'm holding the two together <laughs> like one of those trick cyclists <laughs> <laughs> coming down on one wheel finished finished up, a little fucking Benny or something did you yeah oh yeah finished up break a few hospital. bones wow it just went everywhere <laughs> but I'm just I'm riding two bikes <laughs> there, there, there was a lad who used to live next door but one um, so it was when when, when when we were kids um, and his, 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 his dad had like he bought them like when they were kids him and his brother like little 50cc motorbikes one was like a little a little dirt bike and the other one looked like a little a little road bike and they used to take them out to the field around the back of our house all the time and like me my mum has never liked motorbikes because where she where she lived in netherly if that's okay with yourself Pete um <laughs> where, where, where she used to live in netherly, where, where she used to live in netherly there was a lad years ago going down um going down one of the main roads on his motorbike, fell off, got his head caught in a railing and just decapitated himself. So since then... Well, that escalated quickly. Yeah, oh, Jesus. Since, since then, she's been like, absolutely no to motorbikes. So I, I, I've said to my mates that one day, like, like look, like, when he's next to the field, like, can I, can I come with you on the slide and just have a little go on the motorbikes? And he was like, yeah, 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 sad, sad. And I, obviously, like, looking at, like, a 50cc bike now isn't going to be fast, but when you're like, 10 it's rapid it's a yeah, motorbike, yeah, yeah. you don't know the fucking difference. So we, he, he, he's, he's just said, all you do, you just twist the handle and it goes and I've thought that I didn't know it was going to just go I thought it would build up and there'd yeah. be some sort and so I just went 
twist the hand and this bike just went fuck off and I didn't know how to control it so I've got my leg at the side of the going ah! yeah. and shout when his dad his dad started to chase the bike down the field and I was you're not letting go at I, all I, I, I went skidding off the bike it was an absolute disaster my, my mum wouldn't have bikes and I bought behind her back a 50cc Honda <laughs> with a white shopping basket on the front <laughs> I, I feel locked. like I know what you go up on I you mean as well you know rat. little chicken chaser but, yeah like like yeah. The, all, the front right yeah. the way down yeah, like that yeah. one of them people used to walk past me when I was going fast <laughs> <laughs> and I had it was in the days when I was outrageous I had a fur coat a, a phenomenal fur coat, a wolf coat, <laughs> and a crash helmet, which was a tartan deer stalk, a proper crash helmet. <laughs> I looked a twat. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was on it, you couldn't see the bike, you just saw the fur coat. So yeah. I looked like one of those comics running along. <laughs> and would you believe I broke down in the Mersey Tunnel? I only needed a fountain pen full of petrol to get through. <laughs> oh, God. Police came up and went, oh no, you're walking, I'm not putting you on it. Like, Come on, you look a prat. And I got beeped all the way through. Oh. Did you get charged for that? No, because uh, you get charged. That was no, like five hundred quid. Did you break down on the tunnel? No, it's there now, but no, no, the Honda. They just thought it was the funniest thing they've yeah. ever seen. There's still a kid in a fair of coats on, on the yeah. fucking chicken chaser. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get for charge five hundred quid? I think it's like a standard oh, charge of five hundred pounds for breaking like down, like a jaw fault. Yeah, as soon as you break down, five hundred quid charge. Jesus. Yeah, well, remind me not to do that. Remember a few months ago when they were saying the major tunnel was leaking. Do you remember that a few months ago? They were doing work on the Birkenhead tunnel. That's a story that's been gone. Yeah, that's one of those myth stories. I'm so uh-huh. glad you put man that he's there because I honestly thought that one day I was going to go through it. You know, years ago, you, I've been you, through the tunnel. You, you walked through it years ago when you three weren't even thought of being born. Really? really? Yeah. What, why, why, what made them stop that? Is it all the car emissions? Well, all the cars. That's why they're, they're not. They're so small now to what they were. Or the, the the old tunnel is. Mm. Um, I I was working in the cabin club with Brian Gilberson. Bless him, not not alive anymore. And he used to take me home uh, to West Cam and give me a lift. And he went pricey, and he had a mini van with the back out. So one of those open. And he went pricey. Have a look at that back wheel, will you? <laughs> oh my God! I think I've got a flat tire. Get out. Drives off and leaves me in there. <laughs> <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning. In those days, rats that big. There was hundreds of rats in there hundreds no. of rats in there. and I'm walking and the police went what are you doing I said sponsored walk carried on walk sponsored walk raising money for the rats lad raising money for the rats he was uh, waiting for me at the other end that's boss so have, you, have you always have you always lived over the water have you always, have you ever lived, have you ever lived over there? I had somebody do a story from my home recently and they've seen why I live the view from my lounge is the whole waterfront in Liverpool. Do you know what, oh, like, right. growing up, I can't tell you what that means to me. Yeah. Growing up, being a yeah. typical scout, and I was like, I'd never fucking live in the Whittle, fucking Whittle squirrels and all that walls. It's just, <laughs> it's just what you fucking were brought up to feel like, yeah. I'd be like. And my missus worked over the water for a couple of years in Upton, and I, I'd move tomorrow. I'd move over the water tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Scouts live I would move there. to Birkenhead or fucking Rock Ferry, but once I'd move you, over the once water. Once you get past Rock Ferry and Birkenhead, it's, it's a very, very nice place. Yeah. Yeah. It leads but up to live, Chester yeah, and Chester's lovely. we live in lovely. a beautiful place. I mean, when, once again, I, can, I must got to stop saying this, when you three weren't born, lots of people came Fossil in death. to uh, West Kirby on the train to spend mm. the day on the beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Scouts always do. came down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. of course they do. Of course they do. And they don't take the rubbish home with them, you scruffy bastards. I'm really glad we brought that that me, I didn't know, you, you know, make it me, me off. sick. It Whichever does. camera we're on, you make me them. sick. I was taught to take my rubbish home with me. People go out collecting that, doing it voluntarily. Come and enjoy the beach. Come and enjoy beautiful places. Not just West Kirby, by the way. Mel's Hoyle, whatever. Take your rubbish home, you scruffy bastards. Do you know oh, what, though, oh, right? Not it's a wise wise more. It winds me the winds fuck me up. up, right? But it's such a common occurrence now that councils should put bigger bins out. You can't because we've had the problems with the fires and the bombs. Um, and the as soon as people put bins out, that. people set them on fire like, yeah, within days. Yeah. Who drives? Me. Me. Right. What do you feel about people throwing stuff out the window when Does they're me driving in front of you? Mm. Does me tits oh, in. Yeah. So angry. And if it's a cigarette, that. Oh, I can't tell out. you how dangerous that is. Oh, yeah. Imagine, it's imagine, terrible. imagine terrible. if there's oil on the road or something. Yeah. Kill the family of four. But you see, in my generation, somebody would come after you and say, excuse me, I think you dropped that. 
Yeah, 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 you yeah. can't do that now. Somebody will pull yeah. a knife on you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. true. That's if they haven't left it on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. I, I yeah. might lift that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> I've seen a video from a, in, I think it was China, and uh, there's like a street sweeper on the floor fucking cleaning up, and this woman's just like in a car scanning, and she's just throwing rubbish out the car window. As the fella's sweeping, and this fella just comes over, grabs the fucking the, the dustpan off her, and just empties it into the car window. And the fella goes to get out the car, and he just keeps booting his door shut. Nah, lad, it's your fucking rubbish. And won't let him out the car. Sing- it's, it's annoying. It's yeah. fucking annoying. It's Singapore, no, they don't sell chewing gum. And if you throw rubbish on the floor and you're seen throwing rubbish on the floor, prison. you uh, not prison, you have a, a, a luminous green jacket, and you clean the streets for about six weeks with your name on the back. Really? Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of Japan's like no that chewing well. gum, no chewing gum at all. It is messy well, chewing gum. I, I, I forget if it was who, who told me this a while, a while back. Obviously, somebody who'd been to Japan. Um, <laughs> they said like like a lot of like the like the way we have like like news agents or like corner shops and that that which sell snacks in 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 Japan. Those type of shops. Uh, are like legally required to have a small like table and seating area because if you buy snacks in the shop, right, you, the you've shop. then got to sit down and eat them. You can't take them out and yeah, walk yeah. around eating them because that's when people just die like littering and stuff like so that. What, you can't even take them home. I mean, yeah, you can probably. I, I would imagine so. But if you're going in and buying like being a little muppet though and sitting outside the shop, and, monster munch. Yeah, not happening. I'm taking it home, lad, and then walk and eat it. Yeah, but, but I wouldn't but throw no, it on the no, floor. No, though, but that, but, that's tourist. The Japanese culture is so unique. Like so different. It, yeah. it, I love the Japanese culture. Like I've, I've read a book recently while I was on holiday. I read a book. Um, oh fuck, the name's gone now. Japanese culture. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he doesn't read very but, often. You have to give him <laughs> oh, but what's the book called now? Well, why are you thinking? I've been to oh, Japan. Fuck. And I couldn't, but yes. I'd love I, to go to Japan. Yeah, it was. You know. I was very wary of going to Japan. My, Ikigai, it's called. What, it's what? Ikigai. Oh, Ikigai. Yeah. Uh, uh, my uncle like was Japanese in the Japanese prisoner of war camps, Uncle Eddie. Uh, and he never spoke about it and he was never the same man. So I had a perception of the Japanese. Yeah. So when I went there to Tokyo and we toured the island, I didn't think I was going to like them. Yeah. I thought they were the most beautiful yeah. people. Yeah. And I understand where that came from, uh, uh, but I saw... Those people couldn't speak English, but they would get you to wherever you want to get to, and they'd stop doing whatever they do yeah. to make sure you yeah. got there. I found them absolutely charming, and the beggars, the people who live on the yeah. streets, are as clean as you've never seen they like yeah. it. Hmm. And there's no pressure about begging. It's just, yeah. it's, it's a different way of life. The biggest shock for me was all the tall buildings yeah. because of the earthquakes. Yeah. But they are but apparently the made that the they move, move yeah. as does the tower yeah. where I work for Radio yeah, yeah. City. Yeah. That moves seven inches. Yeah. Oh, it does, yeah. yeah. It's got to. There's another place I was looking at. I forget the name of it, but I, I forget if it was in China or in Japan. Like Gung Ao Ch- There's one with the ball on top. It's got the trains that go through the residential oh, apartments. Yeah, and yeah. It, the, yeah. Fl- it, it looks like I'm on the first floor, but I'm actually on the 21st yeah, floor. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. It's like they're... they're not not streets, but you know, like like the walk on the yeah. shop, but it's like twenty, you're twenty one yeah. floors I, I, I up forget, outside yeah. on like it's pavements. Crazy. It's fucking crazy. I, I forget which city it was in, in in Japan. I know we've spoke about it before, but I don't, I don't know if you've heard it yourself. The ad, it, it might have even been Tokyo. I'm not sure, but the ad like an underground subway system. And it wasn't very efficient. It oh, was like, yeah, it and, wasn't. It's, and it's the slime mold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like a fungus, like a slime, which. Like say you were to put it in a maze, it grows. beginning and the, the end, yeah. it will it will just find the most effective way of. of ma- so what they yeah. done? They built a small scale model of yeah. Tokyo, and and then put some of this fungus at point A, point B on each corner of the city, so so what, and no, what, which way no, it went, so, and then so they redesigned it. So, so, so no, so what they done was they trained the slime mold um, to feed off oats as a food source, right? So then they put a big chunk of oats on this map which was Tokyo, and then put a piece of oat on every other sort of city, train station, but in Tokyo, the city, uh, and let the slime mold grow. So it grows and eats the food, but then it reorganizes itself in the most efficient way. And then they redesigned the Japanese underground train system to what the slime mold suggested because it was the most efficient way. Did you see Japan in the last World Cup? (laughs) Where like when the game finished, 
all the fans stayed behind and cleaned the whole stadium. Yeah, really? Yeah. Did, yeah. All the players cleaned the changing room and everything. There was pictures all over Sky News of the changing rooms. The players like mopped it all and everything. It's just isn't it mad though? How that's something which I mean, obviously it's, it's a nice gesture anyway, but it's mad that that's something which is newsworthy. When it, yeah. if you think about yeah, it, yeah. If, if you think about it, obviously I, I'm not saying I'm going to go and start like 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 sweeping stadiums, but it's something which like. We we all probably should do. Yeah. yeah. The thing I was is, surprised yeah. about with Japan and Singapore, the undergrounds are spectacular. Yeah. Absolutely spectacular. Everyone falls asleep, but nobody wakes them up for the station. They wake <laughs> up. They wake up for their station. Yeah. They're all asleep. At the, and and they you just think, know. how are they going to know? <laughs> but nobody says, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. this yeah. is the station. Yeah. They just leave them. Just nobody know. talks to each other. And they're all asleep. And I'm going, I'm going to have to tell him. He might want to go. <laughs> but they do. Get up. Have you, seen, have you seen, like, the Japanese kids who, like, travel, like, three, four miles to school on their own? Like, six-year-old kids get up from the house and they have, like, a little backpack with a big flag on so they can be seen walking through the massive crowds in Tokyo. And they just get, like, three trains and a bus Is to the school Is it classed as safe? Yeah. Japan and Yeah, and so safe. Yes. So and safe. Singapore, even more so. Is is, it really? is Singapore, yeah. your kids could walk out at three in the morning and you'd have no problem yeah. at all. It's no crazy. problem at all. Really? It is unreal. It, it's it's incredible. S- scandalously expensive both yeah. places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scandalously expensive. Yeah. Do you know a mad, mad Japanese sort of culture thing? Uh, do you know what their delicacy is on Christmas Day? No. KFC. KFC. Yeah, that's a crazy one, isn't it? Really? So, yeah, yeah on yeah. Christmas Day, there's queues mm. out the doors at KFC and people have to pre order because they're. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This edition is like a bucket of fucking KFC chicken. chicken on Christmas Day. I wonder when that started, though. It's a boss edition. Ca- boss as far as I'm aware, Christmas predates KFC. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a modern, no, it's a it's modern so tradition, but... Yeah, yeah it's so did, I wonder what they did before that. Like, Mahi's well, probably... But, but, but <laughs> a different idea, but t- talking about that, I straight away always remember the Chinese when I've been to several places in China, and they drink, as the Westerns do... Red wine. Yeah. They love expensive red wines, but they don't like the taste, so they put Coca Cola in it. Yeah, Co- I've heard so that. Pay I've heard that red wine and Coca Cola. Coca Cola. But they, yeah. because it makes it taste nicer. They don't like the red wine, but because they can buy it. Yeah. So it doesn't matter how expensive Mad. and what vintage or what class of wine. Coca-Cola. Imagine being Weird. fucking o- owning a vineyard and some of the best wines in the world, and then these fucking people in China yeah. just like Coca-Cola, lad, you'd be wounded. Take yeah, them a thousand years to get the wine like that. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, in fact, my column <laughs> tonight a great in the Echo <laughs> is about drinks, is about Prime. Oh, uh, yeah, but, the energy yeah. drink. Yeah. Oh, bad. yeah. Because Coronation Street now have got a storyline where they've told Ryan, who's got a problem, stop drinking those energy drinks. They're not doing you any good. And I've done this whole thing in the column tonight about energy drinks, and the reaction's been amazing. And finished up with, and your parents will know about this, the old ginger beer plants. Yeah. Mm. We all owned a ginger beer plant. And you would split it. You made your own ginger beer, split it and give it to you. You'd split it and give it to them. Everybody had homemade ginger beer. And it was an energy drink far better and not as sweet and sickly Mad. as them now. But Mad. you had to make the ginger beer quickly because it would explode. You'd be sitting at home and it would, because it was alive and it was just building oh, up. Oh, shit. And, but... I don't know anybody out there That's watching what? this. Have you got a ginger beer plan? Because I can't find anyone with one anymore. I but everybody, either. everybody That's, in the really world. That's what the problem was in Belfast. Everyone just had too much ginger beer. Yeah. <laughs> You're blowing up everywhere. Yeah. I'm really intrigued to try and make ginger beer. I didn't know you could make it just straight from a plant. Yeah. Absolutely, from a ginger beer plant. I thought I, oh, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I honestly, genuinely thought it was like carbonated, like ginger flavour and like like no, ginger. Just me. Ginger, yeah, yeah, it's ginger yeah. plant. So oh. it's, you know, but I, do you know what? I was coming tonight, really looking forward to this. I, I, if you'd have told me Can what we going to talk stream? about, I would never in a million years have known this tonight was going to go like this. See, that's, we, why, that's what happens when you come on here. We don't plan anything. We just chat. We just, we chat, just have a laugh and chat. chat a bit of shit. That's what we're going But if you enjoyed yourself, that's the main question. Do I look as if I'm enjoying myself? You do. You do. You do. There you go. There you go. There you go. I think it's amazing. How long we done? How long are we Got an hour. Hour and 20. Hour and 20, yeah. Good. Hour and 20. We good. Unless there's anything else in particular you want to talk about. What's your longest one you've ever done? I think nearly two hours with Adam Rowe. 
Yeah, we'll was it that long? just under, just under. It was about, about an hour and 40. 50, hour, hour 45, hour so 50. So you don't have a time limit on this, no? No, no, no. no. It's usually, wanna... usually anything between an hour and an hour oh, no. 30. Yeah. But... Yeah. Do you want a par three? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah. People seem oh, no, to like no, par no, one. I, 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 yeah, yeah. We'll get him on for a par three. A little break and I'll, yeah. I'll come back again. I, Lovely. I, I actually enjoy it and I enjoy it. Do you know what we should do, right? Do you know what we should do because... We started doing specials as well. So, like, we put it on our Patreon and, like, we've had a cooking special. We've done, like, Ninja Warrior where we just go and we film and do silly things and all that. We should do a collaboration with Pete yeah. for the special because you've got a lot of ideas. You're very crazy. You've got a lot of pull. We should do a special out in the city somewhere, do something. Well, I, think we, think so, I yeah. think we can get something together. To I think, think we can get something together. We'll all go to Gaucho, sit down for a nice business meal. Yeah. Uh, and we'll get something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gaucho. We'll get, yeah, we'll yeah. get the, I, the I, wine I, and the Coke. Yeah. I'm an ambassador. And then the Coca-Cola. I'm, I'm, I'm an ambassador. I'm an I get discounts. I'm not going to lie. I knew that when I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I see that on your Instagram and I was like, I've always loved pizza. Listen, listen. We got invited to Gaucho. That's how we, the first night we met you in person. that's how we met you. And I seen that bill, and I wouldn't be paying for that on my own. Uh, listen, <laughs> so I was ambassador. Was anybody in there would have paid for that. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 even though they told us when they invited us, it was all complimentary. I we asked, were panicking. I asked about four times. I was like, Are you sure? Just, I was like, just to double check. This is all on the house. And they were like, yeah, it's all free. And I was like, well, in that case, I'll have three more or whatever was in that class. <laughs> yeah. There was cocktails which come with Harry That was an amazing them. night, you know. That was, was such night. a lovely gesture. Yeah. But nobody abused it. No, it was a lovely night. Yeah. Nobody abused it. Yeah, yeah, nobody yeah. Was, no by was the way, so drunk. you know, because when I asked who you all were, mm -hmm. it was because of Jay Hind. From oh, the guides. The guides. Because Jay's a great mate of mine and yeah. was my producer on radio for years. Yeah. Oh, wow. And he was the one that said, they're really nice lads. You should go on their podcast. Oh, yeah, we want to do something him. with the guy yeah. because we, we spoke to him quite like briefly about it on the night in Gaucho. Um, and, and it was one of the, the oh yeah, we'll definitely have to do and then, but everyone was busy and all over the place, but we definitely yeah. like we'll, we'll, shout we'll out Jay. Back into oh yeah, shout out Jay and the guy in Liverpool, by the way. Put, the guy just smashed put, put, put on the screen if you can be asked and you're editing. Um but yeah, <laughs> the, 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 they've absolutely smashed it though. Like yeah. like it's 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 hasn't it got am I wrong in saying it's got its own TV channel on freeview yeah, or something? Yeah, it's it has, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. He's doing tremendous. And what is good all through the pandemic, everything. He never, ever, ever lost the quality. Yeah, the quality yeah. of yeah. videos is brilliant. Well, that's when and I first he's came done, he's done, he's done, he's done stuff on our work and everything yeah. on the um, the driving experience yeah. and all that. It's that's boss, when it's I boss. first. That's, that, that's when I first like like I'd heard of it, but that's when I first started paying attention to it. It was over lockdown because they. Like, it was it was there was just constant like constant content. It was good content as well. This coming up. You see so many different forums and and things pop up and go, and he's just it's all about the longevity, and he's just grafted and grafted. Yeah, and, and still grafts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I'm very proud to be part of the guide, so good. I like that. So yeah. I, do, I do the mature interviews. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, 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 unless there's anything any corner up you want to promote that you've got no 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 I'm not worried about promoting I'm just trying to think of something we, we can finish with <laughs> uh, what's the story about nice... your dad uh, what you said the story about your dad <gasps> thank you so much Yes, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm just in the mood for this one. <laughs> so, before I go, can I tell you? Um, of course, of course if you Gumpet. don't know, I'm, ado <coughs> I'm adopted. Yeah. yeah, that's another story. You mentioned the briefly last right, time. Right. Yeah. So, I found my mother, my real mother, uh, my birth mother. The woman that brought me up was my mum, my life. Hilda gave me the bracelet. That was my life. Anyway, my mother told me that my father was a Polish-American GI, and she gave me a picture. Now, in my autobiography, someone there in the is army. a picture. What's a, what's a GI? What's a GI? Sorry, Pete. Oh, a GI is an American soldier. GI oh, Joe. Okay. What's okay. the stand for? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 okay, okay, okay. So, GI Joe, the old dolls. Yeah, yeah like action man. Yeah. So, it was a, a GI. So, she cool. said it was a Polish-American GI. True story, this. This is amazing. So, long story short, talking away, talking away, talking away. I rang her up one night. We weren't friendly, but I kept in touch because I wanted to know who I was. Yeah. I wanted to find out everything. So, so I'd keep in touch. But she wasn't a woman I wanted in my life. Yeah. Did yeah. I find out why? She put she didn't want children. She didn't want children. In those wow. days... How old you, was it when... She, well, no, it's part of the story, well, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Is it part? In those days, you could have a baby... And if you were in the forces, you go away to Wrexham, that's where I was actually born, mm. in a place. Then you go back to the forces. Nobody knows you've had the baby. You've given the baby away. Get on with your life. Yeah, really? okay. So that's wow. what they So where's your mum actually from? She's not from Liverpool? Liverpool. No, oh, Liverpool. oh, is she? Okay. Yeah, then. Liverpool. Uh, she's dead now. 
Um, anyway, she told me my father was a Polish American GI. So I said, fantastic, blah, 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 blah. And this particular night, years later, I was looking and didn't see her often. I said, her name was Grace. Grace, don't watch television tonight. The Esther, uh, Esther Ranson show. That's Esther Ranson who did Child Line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're talking about trying to find my father. Um, and it's a program about that. She went, what do you mean? I said, well, we're trying to find my father. She went, oh, son, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to lie to you. I said, pardon? <laughs> she went, I, I just, and I went, what are you going on about? Well, it's not your father. The Polish-American GI is not my father. You've so done a full show. Not my, hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm talking, which we were, to Oprah Winfrey, because Oprah Winfrey did programs trying to find people. I've got a detective in America. Oh, I'm paying all this money, and you're telling me my father's not a Polish American. Who is he? I don't know. That, who is, uh, who's my father? Oh, I'm so sorry. He was an Italian prisoner of war at Burton Wood. He climbed over the fence, give me one, and went back. <laughs> give me one. <laughs> she didn't say that, by the way. Insinuated. So we had a prisoner of war camp in Burton Wood. Oh, it, it was a detention centre wow. for Italians that lived here, for whatever. And she said he was Sicilian. So, cutting the story down again, I now think that my father is Sicilian. Hmm. <laughs> I got a mate, sadly no longer with us, who speaks perfect Italian. He wrote me a letter. You couldn't make this bit up. I sent this letter trying to trace my father in Sicily, and we sent it to the mafia boss in Palermo prison. Fuck off. Don't know who he is, can't remember his name, but we sent the letter. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. And we heard nothing. <laughs> two, months later, P Price me like <laughs> two months later... He priced sending me this letter. Two months later... A television company got in touch with me from Italy and said uh, we want to come to Liverpool uh, with an interpreter and talk to you because we think we found your father. Uh -huh. So it was passed to them. Mm. They came to Liverpool. I always remember, and I've never been able to find it. They did a video which I thought was going to be shite. It was not. It was an incredible video. They had me singing at the grapes. They had me on the radio show. They showed Matthew. It was a tremendous video. They were convinced they'd wow. found my father. Wow. And the program's called Chez Vista. Now, it's a program across Europe, still going. I think it's still going now. But years ago, after the war, it was huge. 20 million people because they were trying to find each other. And it was a huge program. So they said, we think you've found your father. No one's asked me about my father. Nobody's seen a picture. Yeah, no one knows yeah. that. How the, the found hell the they can find a father? father? What is going on here? But I thought, hang on, television. I'm not wasting this. Go with the flow. <laughs> Daddy. So, building up, I'm building up. Yeah. <laughs> building up, it's building up. It's mal mio day. They then said, we want you to come on Italian television. We think we've found your father. So, nine o'clock from Radio City on a Friday night, we are going live in Italian television. <laughs> and they have got a photo of my father, who they think my father is, and I've got the photo who she says he is. So, I've got the two photos. I then open the photos before I go live. I can only say one was like, uh, Barack Obama and the other one looked like Trump. No, you couldn't have had two people <laughs> just not at all. There's no way in God's earth this is my father here. But I'm going on live television. <laughs> and there's a few million people. We surprise, go. Surprise, surprise. It starts. <laughs> all the underneath. And then they go into English. Hello, Peter. We think we have found your father. And the camera goes on to this. And by the way, I've got a photo of him on my phone of this old guy who I look like. <laughs> Anybody looks like. And he's an old man. And he said, Peter, we think this is your papa. If this is your papa, what do you want to say to him? And I went, if you are my papa, I want to come to our village and eat our tomatoes and drink our wine. I really want... <laughs> Cut! Ad break. Woof! He has a heart attack on live a tell tell I'm not even his friggin' son. <laughs> and he's had a you heart attack. Poor fella, trying to find his son. <laughs> 
Luckily, <laughs> you daddy. Luckily, he didn't die. You're just starving. <laughs> He's got to want some tomatoes, lad. So they, and I'm cut off. I'm sitting there not knowing what's going on. <laughs> no one's talking cut to me. <laughs> I'm going, tell you is that it? <laughs> finished? <laughs> Have we finished? Have we finished? What's going on? What's going on? And so much happened after that. But the, <laughs> you know, you're, you're the, <laughs> the end of the story for me was I was then getting emails from all over the world. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Peter. I'm your father. <laughs> Hello, Peter. I'm your father. Hello, Peter. I'm your father. All over the world. And then the best. From, from, Germany. Derby, then. from Germany. From Germany. Hello. My name is Hans. I'm not your father, but I found you very attractive. Uh. I would like to talk to you sometime. And he shut me up through my father. And we've got Hans with us. Bring him in. I then get this man's daughter who follows me on Twitter <laughs> and is convinced I'm her brother and will not have it that we're not related. And I've got all the photos from her of my brothers, my father, my... Own. They're not my father! Do you look alike with any of the siblings? <laughs> Eunice, <coughs> the gladiators, Eunice... Uh, from uh, yeah. Eunice Hubbard yeah. from Liverpool was in Sicily doing a film. She's now the biggest stunt person in the world. She's all the stunts. She's... Gladiators as in yeah. contenders. Yeah. You were going Years my ago. first whistle. Well, now Eunice was the double for Angela Jolie, Jolie. Oh, yeah. and their best mates and Brad's oh, wow. best mate. But she's now the top. She was away for a year doing Star Wars. She lives in Liverpool. Oh. Still here. And she's Scouse. <laughs> and she's a Liverpool through and through. Lovely. She's fabulous. She was in Sicily. She said, I'm doing a film, Pricey. Send us a photo of your father. Hmm. So I sent a photo. She said, Peter, can't believe it. That's there's about, about, Obama, that's about <laughs> 600 fucking gone past. <laughs> Looks like a man. Because they all look alike. But this um, woman is convinced and she she can't understand why I'm in denial that I'm her brother. Is but, there no party of that, even, not even for a second? I would love to be Sicilian. I love the idea. See the nose? Everyone you thought look it was, a bit Italian, though, Jewish, I reckon. Jewish, yeah. Yeah. You look a bit Italian. But the woman that had me, I think she was a liar, so I don't think I'll ever find out. Yeah. 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 Just lie to you once, you lie to you again. Yeah, yeah no. But, oh, I've got Pay a photo to some and and all that. Mm. <laughs> and I'll, oh, no. I'll like. stick to the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll keep, <laughs> we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll keep it, we'll, we'll keep it continental at the very least. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, lads. There's another chunk of my life. Hello, Thank you yeah. very much. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Again. Part Thank, three, you. Thank you for coming down. Band, yeah. No, I've really enjoyed it. And well, I'm in the big car tonight, not the smart car. Oh, well, lovely, <laughs> lovely. So, it's, it's so no one can pick it up and run away. most of the road. He's <laughs> 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 in a fucking sta- it was a stage coach that went on fire the other day. <laughs> <laughs> on the mega bus. But uh, Pete, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming down again. We really appreciate it. Yep. Uh, thanks to everybody around for watching. Again, as always, we appreciate you. Uh, all of our social media links are down below in the description. So go and click them. Give us all a little follow. Go and have a look at some of Pete's work. He's he, He's got a catalogue. Of, of professional work over the years which which is well worth taking a look into so if you're interested in any of that his links will be down in the description thanks very much see you next week peace bye